I'd like to transition now to talking about common mechanisms of addition and elimination reactions. Like substitution reactions, additions and eliminations have nucleophilic and electrophilic variants, and everything hinges on the nature of that reagent XY that either adds across the pi bond or is eliminated to form the pi bond. Let's begin by looking at addition reactions, and specifically, let's look at the nucleophilic additions. Nucleophilic additions are very common because they feature the pi bond as an electrophile. That's very important to note. Nucleophilic additions feature the pi bond as an electrophile. And since the carbonyl is one of the most common pi bonds that we see in organic chemistry, and it's a very electrophilic pi bond at that, nucleophilic additions are very common. So to give you an example of a very common nucleophilic addition reaction, if yet again we take an amide base, like NH2 minus, and we treat it with a carbonyl compound like acetone, addition to the carbonyl carbon can occur through an ADN elementary step, and that's followed by protonation typically, maybe the base is catalytic, and so a proton is removed to form the final product. So the sequence of steps here is ADN, that's addition to a polarized pi bond, followed by proton transfer. And the ultimate final product corresponds to the addition of the elements of H and NH2, or NH3 in sum, across the CO pi bond. That's nucleophilic addition because the reagent is a nucleophile. NH2 is a nucleophile. The common sequence of steps here is nucleophilic addition followed by proton transfer. And there may be a preceding proton transfer if the nucleophile needs to be generated first. Electrophilic additions involve the pi bond as a nucleophile. This means that the reagent that the pi bond reacts with is an electrophile. And electrophilic additions are common, for example, in the chemistry of enol ethers. This is just an example, and I chose this example specifically because the enol ether contains a double bond activated by an electron donating group by an oxygen. So, so for example, if you take a compound like this and you treat it with Br2, what you find is the displacement of bromide initially in a step that kind of resembles an SN2 plus AE step, but we can label it simply as pi to sigma star using the orbital labels. This leads to a cationic intermediate, which then can be attacked by the remaining Br minus anion, producing a compound in which the elements of bromine have added a cross the pi bond. This feels a lot like a substitution reaction, if you recall electrophilic substitution in the previous webcast. In fact, this cationic intermediate is very analogous to the intermediate that we see in electrophilic substitution reactions. But what occurs at this stage instead of DE is actually an AN step. So the sequence here is that first pi to sigma star kind of step. And whatever the elementary step at this first stage, it's almost always a pi source to some kind of electron sink, then followed by an AN elementary step, in which the cation that's generated as a result of using that pi bond as an electron source is quenched by some nucleophile, in this case, Br-. That's electrophilic addition. What about elimination reactions? The nomenclature of nucleophilic and electrophilic is not generally applied to elimination reactions, but I think a lot of the same ideas apply. So, for example, we can think about nucleophilic elimination as involving the use of a strong base. And in nucleophilic eliminations, the typical mechanism is E2. The idea is a strong base, such as, to beat a dead horse once again, an amide base can remove a proton and cause a leaving group to depart at the same time. Another possibility for nucleophilic elimination is the so-called E1CB mechanism, which is not a single-step mechanism, but involves proton transfer followed by a separate beta elimination elementary step. I'll let you draw a mechanism for E1CB on your own. Under electrophilic conditions, now we're under acidic conditions, and when the substrate is right, when the structure of the substrate is right, electrophilic eliminations can take place. You're most familiar with this in the context of the E1 mechanism, most likely. So you take a highly substituted alkyl halide, for example, 
hit it with heat or maybe even a little bit of acid. And what we find is that there's an intermediate that's formed via DN first that produces a cation. And what follows from there is a DE step in which a proton is lost. And this may be considered proton transfer if there's a base around to remove that proton, such as water, for example. Uh, but the result is an elimination on the whole. We can kind of see E1 as the opposite of E1CB. The leaving group departs first, and then the proton is lost to establish the double bond. But this pattern of DN, that's leaving group departure, essentially, is what you're used to calling that, followed by DE, which is the loss of a proton to form a pi bond, results in a net elimination.